Hi, my name is Tim Schobel, and I'm a NetSuite consultant with Business Solution Partners. And today we're going to be talking about the setup involved in intercompany. So uh, today I'll just be going over the basic setup as far as um, the criteria for setting up your intercompany accounts payable account and your intercompany accounts receivable account, as well as the intercompany entities like uh, your intercompany vendors and intercompany customers. And we'll also talk a little bit about um, how your subsidiaries need to be set up to enable them for automatic eliminations. So today I'll just begin by talking about those intercompany uh, AR and AP accounts. So here I've got the chart of accounts open in another tab, uh, but we can get to the chart of accounts from lists, accounting accounts. And here uh, I've scrolled down to the section where we've got the intercompany receivables and the intercompany payables. So I'll just view each of these in another tab. And part of the thing about these accounts is uh, when you initially set them up, uh, we have them here flagged to eliminate intercompany transactions. And as you can see, they are shared across all subsidiaries. Uh, noted here by the include children if i hit edit so we can see this is classified as the accounts receivable type and we see that we've just selected the parent company and uh, check this include children so this uh, intercompany account should be available uh, to transact uh, you know, with any subsidiary uh, same here for the intercompany ap account so we've also enabled uh, eliminate intercompany transactions here. And basically what this is saying is we can check this box on the account setup just to uh, flag it as an intercompany account. And that means it'll be used to record these transactions between subsidiaries. And in doing so, we're able to uh, post these intercompany transactions and non-intercompany transactions to intercompany accounts. But AR and AP accounts can be used for uh, recording amounts that are candidates for eliminations. Hence this checkbox here. Uh, also note that once this is set up and we've got um, amounts uh, booked to either of these accounts, we can no longer disable the eliminate intercompany transactions checkbox. So uh, this is a, uh, a feature that you cannot disable. Okay. So if I uh, scroll down in my subsidiaries list here, a couple of things I want to draw your attention to, um, and I'll also open this up in a new tab, but as you can see, we've got a couple of different elimination subsidiaries set up here. So if I go over here to set up company subsidiaries and open that up in a new tab, we can see that we've got elimination subsidiary set up for each node in the uh, subsidiary hierarchy. So here we've got an elimination subsidiary set up for any subsidiaries that would be transacting in the uh, immediate parent child hierarchy and as well for this parent-child hierarchy from uh, United States and its two children subsidiaries below it, we need to set up an elimination subsidiary for that node of our subsidiary hierarchy. And uh, that's so we can process the eliminations uh, between these subsidiaries here and then ultimately to process the eliminations for the uh, entire uh, broader hierarchy. Okay. And we can see here that they're both flagged for elimination. So that's how we can tell that quickly. Uh, something I did here is I just you know, usually prefix it uh, with an X just to make sure that the elimination subsidiary is uh, showing up at the bottom of any list of subs or at any node. And I'll just open that up. So some things to note here. Um, so we've flagged it for elimination. This just means that this subsidiary record is going to be used only for journal entries and transactions between subsidiaries. So um, that's uh, how that will work. So when we go to run eliminations as part of the period uh, close checklist, um, those eliminating journal entries, which are used to clear out the uh, uh, intercompany receivables and payables accounts, uh, will be booked to the elimination subsidiary. So that means the elimination journal entries will be booked to this subsidiary or to the uh, other one I just showed you in the hierarchy here. Okay. So 
Uh, a couple of things to note, this, uh, these elimination subsidiaries need to be set up in the currency of its parent. Uh, and other than that, uh, we just need to make sure that this flag is enabled. Okay. So now I want to talk uh, a bit about how to set up our uh, intercompany entities. Okay. So I have set up, uh, well, I will actually walk through the process of setting these up right now. So I'll set up uh, intercompany customers and vendors. The reason being that these need to be tagged on the lines of uh, you know, journal entries or other transactions just so that uh, they're um, you know, tagged to the correct entity and that um, they, those are then used to basically uh, you know, uh, push the amount booked for whatever line on the transaction to the correct entity on the uh, payables or receivable side. So for payable side, it would be an intercompany vendor, and for receivables, uh, that would be an intercompany customer. So here I can go to lists, relationships, vendors, new, and I'll create an intercompany vendor to represent each subsidiary in this node here. So I'm gonna create intercompany vendors for each of these subsidiaries. And I'll also create our company customers for each of these subsidiaries, US1 and US2. So on this vendor uh, form here, it, the key thing is we would like to give our intercompany vendors and customers some sort of distinguishing prefix so that we know uh, they're an intercompany uh, entity. And that means that they're more uh, readily searchable from the global search up in the top here. And so I will just give this a prefix of ICV to denote an intercompany um, vendor and ICC to denote an intercompany customer. So I'll call this ICV US1 for the uh, US1 subsidiary. And this field is where I'll specify the subsidiary that I represent. So in the represent subsidiary, I'll select US1 from the dropdown. And then primary subsidiary, I'll select probably the parent of that node. So this field is really what's crucial for distinguishing an intercompany vendor or customer. And if they don't see this exposed on your uh, vendor or customer forms, you can expose it by going up to customize form and going to the screen field section and ensuring that uh, this field is exposed. And if you want to create a separate form for that. You can also create a separate uh, intercompany vendor form that has this field exposed specifically. So I've uh, made sure that this is representing the US1 subsidiary. If I go to the subsidiary sub tab, I can see the primary subsidiary denoted here. And I can also select the other subsidiary with which this intercompany vendor should be transacting, which would be US2. If I try to select US1 here and click add, I'm gonna get an error specifying that the represent subsidiary must be different than any subsidiary uh, relationship flagged here. So you are not going to be able to add this. Um, you can't specify the uh, represent subsidiary uh, as a subsidiary relationship or as a primary subsidiary up here. Okay. So uh, with that, I will just hit okay and I will Save and new. And I'll also go ahead and create the uh, intercompany vendor for the US2 subsidiary. So in the represent subsidiary, I'll hit that drop down. And under the subsidiaries, I'll make sure I select the US1 here. Okay. And then I will save that. And now I can see that it's been set up. So this is the company vendor representing US2 and it's able to uh, transact with the, its parent and with its uh, sister subsidiary, US1. And I, um, now that I've established those relationships for the payable side of intercompany transactions, now I'm going to set up the intercompany customer. So I'll go to lists, relationships, customers, new. And similarly here, we need to make sure that the represent subsidiary field is exposed. And I'll just give this that ICC prefix, and this will be US1. 
I'll set the represent subsidiary as US1, parent is the United States. And if you have multi-subsidiary customers enabled, you should be able to see the subsidiary sub tab here, just like on the vendor side. And I will set this up exactly the way I set up the vendors. I'll add both the parent and its sister sub here, and then I'll just do save and new. And now I'll create the additional intercompany customer record. And save it. Okay. So that's um, pretty much the setup as far as how you need to set up your intercompany AR accounts, AP accounts, your uh, subsidiaries along with elimination subsidiaries, and how you need to set up your intercompany customers and vendors with the represent subsidiary field. So uh, the helpful thing about this represent subsidiary field, uh, really what this is doing is it's indicating the entity is an intercompany customer. So therefore it's easy to create a saved search showing all of your intercompany customers or vendors I'll go up here and create a new save search. And I'll create a customer save search. And say, represent subsidiary is not none. And I'll just make sure inactive is no here. And then I can preview this. And I can see both of my uh, intercompany customers here. And likewise, on the uh, vendor side, I can create a save search of vendors. And I'll just do the same thing. Represent subsidiary is none of none. And inactive is no. I'll preview that. And I can see both of those intercompany vendors now. This is why it's also helpful to have that prefix. I can just do uh, ICV. And I can see both those vendors popping up or ICC. And I can see both those customers. So that's really the uh, process for the initial setup. Um, and that's, uh, that's really it. So uh, once we uh, yeah, have that all set up, we're able to then get into uh, you know, creating our intercompany uh, journal entries under transactions, financial, make intercompany journal entries. And I can tag these intercompany vendors or customers to the uh, lines uh, for the intercompany payables for intercompany vendors, or I could tag intercompany customers to the intercompany receivables lines in those transactions. And uh, I will walk through that process in a separate video. Thanks, and that's all for this initial setup video.